How many is ready to receive from the Lord? Huh? How many want to see? Like, I need something this morning that's going to help me travel this journey that God's got me on. Amen? Amen. Uh, I, want to, I want you to know that God has prepared me to give you something that I hope, I'm not praying or anything, that I, that, that I can give you to help you in your journey. I was thinking about this morning, I was getting ready. I was like, wow, I have such a responsibility to share God's word with you so you can be strengthened in your walk with the Lord. Amen? So we're, as disciples, we, we try to uh, learn. The, the word disciple means we're learners of God. How many is a learner of God? I want to learn from God this morning. I need something from Him that will help me. I've learned, how many understand, uh, by raising your hand, I understand what the Trinity is. Who knows what the Trinity is? Raise your hand with confidence that you know what the Trinity is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. Okay, good. The rest of us are learning, right? Which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So what is the Trinity? The Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. How many have heard that before, right? You've heard that. Okay, now everybody hands it up, right? So that's the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Um, this week we're going to be um, continuing our series on prayer. And we, 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 uh, today we're going to talk about specifically why God doesn't answer our prayers. And we have to know that God the Father wants to communicate with you. Amen? And He provided salvation through His Son Jesus. That's why He came to the cross and died for us. So now our sins can be forgiven. And we are restored now because of why... Uh, because Jesus paid for the penalty of our sins. We don't have to be guilty for our sins anymore. Our sins can be washed away through His blood. Amen? Come on, put a smile on your face. You know it's true. When I sin, God, as long as I don't have that ultimate sin of rejecting God, I, all my sins can be forgiven. All I have to do is believe. Amen? Come on, this is truth this morning. All right? So we can be forgiven. And then Jesus said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit to help you walk this walk after I go on, right? So the Holy Spirit is in the world today. And he's walking, he's, he's, he's flow, going back and forth. He's in our hearts. When we accepted Jesus, he was a deposit for our salvation. Can you say amen? Do you know what that means? Does anybody know what that means? Raise your hand if you know what I just said, if you understand that. It says, Jesus says the Holy Spirit is a deposit in us for our salvation. Can you say amen or oh my? I don't know what you're talking about, Pastor, this morning. That's okay, because we're going to learn this, because it's very, very important that we understand the Holy Spirit is in us right now, and the Holy Spirit helps us when we need help. I don't understand what's going on in my life. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to do. Amen? I don't know how to pray. The Holy Spirit will help you pray. I don't understand when I'm reading the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will help you. How many does, did taxes this week? Did you ever do taxes? How many did tax? Right, got taxes, right? Tax day is not Monday, right? I don't understand the tax code. Help me, God, to understand what's going on. And do you know that God will help you with that? Amen. He cares about every aspect of your life. <laughs> Come on. I don't know what. I mean, put the W two form in. They do deductions, all that crazy stuff, right? I want to do what's right because I'm a Christian, so I want to do what's right. Amen. But I don't understand it. But the Holy Spirit will give you understanding in everything in your life. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He will help you. The Holy Spirit is so powerful. He's with you. He's in you. He's all around us. So when you pass your Bible's preaching and you don't understand what I'm saying, guess what? The Holy Spirit will help you understand. Hallelujah. Because he, he hears everything that Jesus and the Father is doing. He's not going to tell us anything different. So what Jesus already did, he'll confirm that in your spirit, and he will only tell you what the Father's will is all the time. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He helps us understand this thing about prayer. How many want to pray but don't pray? How many like gave up on prayer because you just know God doesn't feel like he answers your prayer? How many don't know how to pray? Raise your hand. Come on. I'm not very good. Don't raise your hand. Sometimes I don't know what to pray and I don't know how to pray. That's why you need to come on Saturday. And uh, I'll tell you, I'll be praying for you on Saturday. We'll be in the air on heading to the beach in North Carolina. So we'll be praying on the beach for you that evening. Uh, but Andy and Richard will be here. And they're gonna, if you don't know how to pray, uh, Deanna will probably be here. If these guys know how to pray, amen. And so they'll come and teach you how to pray. All right? So how do I pray? What do I say when I pray? 
Anyway, all that stuff will happen on Saturday. So what happens, um, the title of the sermon today is Why Doesn't God Answer Prayer? Or Why Does God Answer My Prayer? There's some reason behind that. When we don't want to pray, well, let me, let me tell you a story. Can I tell you a story? I love stories. I'm not a very good storyteller, but I try to. But before we do that, would you turn to Romans chapter 8? And I want to pray before I tell my story. Romans chapter 8 and 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're going to do two verses as we start today. Romans 8, what? Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. It's talking about the Spirit. It says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance to, with the will of God. The Holy Spirit prays or intercedes for us according to the will of God. Isn't that awesome? So you know the Spirit of God is praying for you. Jesus is praying for you. We talked about that a while back. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you. I mean, he's praying for us. And then we know the Spirit prays for us, and he prays according to God's will. Isn't that amazing? So he's on your side. Amen? God is on your side. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. Now it is God who makes both of us, I think that's 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians 1. I do this and, and I type it wrong again. Yeah, there we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set us his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Two verses. The Spirit of God is praying for us, and we're sealed by the Spirit for what is to come. Amazing facts, amazing truths that we know that God will help us when we don't know what to pray. So why does God answer, doesn't answer prayer? So let me tell you a story. I was um, I heard this story, so it's not really my story, but I, I, I thought it was so appropriate for today. I want to share it with you. So how, how, have you ever been in the woods, like a deep, a thick woods? You know where there's just like trees everywhere, oak trees, palm trees, yep. not palm trees, <laughs> that's the wrong place. Oak, oak trees, whatever, redwoods, whatever, trees, trees everywhere, right? So in the winter time, have you been in the woods like in the spring and the summer when all the leaves are there and it's so beautiful, but in the winter time, you look at these trees and there's like barren, right? I mean, there's branches everywhere. You can see for a really far distance in the woods, right? In the winter time, you can see like a long distance. I'm a hunter, so I can see what I can be able to see far away. But in the winter time, you just there's no there's like no leaves. The, the trees aren't producing any fruit. Um, it's dry. The, the uh, rubbish, the, the leaves are all over the ground. Plants aren't growing. There's just nothing there. It just looks desolate, but it's kind of like looks cool too at the same time. It's like that is a big tree, and those are a lot of branches. I mean, that could produce a lot of things, but anyway, I just want you to put that in your think today. Why in the winter time, maybe sometimes our prayer life is like that, right? We just like, just dry, nothing, there's nothing there, there's just, it's just dead. But something's happening to the trees during the winter time that you can't really see. The branches and the bark and the leaves, all that is gone. It just looks like this desolate place. But that tree isn't dead, is it? But in the, in the springtime, what happens? It comes alive. We're going to talk about that and why and how, to, how it's important to us. But let's go back to why God doesn't answer our prayers. There's a few reasons why God doesn't answer our prayers. Sometimes we go to prayer and we feel we feel unworthy of being in God's presence. We feel like um, I just don't feel like praying, but I know I should. I've never been 
whatever. I, yeah. I know I should be talking to God. I know I should pray. I know there's power in prayer, but I just don't feel like it. And part of that reason, I think, is because there's some, some problems maybe in our own personal life. So if I pick five things. There's probably many more in, the, in Scripture that I can go through. But I think I just picked five things that we can talk about this morning of why God doesn't answer prayer. The first one, if you're taking notes, is relationships. So when we have a poor relationship with people or we have problems with other people, it seems like that hinders our prayer. And the first thing I want to talk about, if you would turn to your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. And I'm going to go through a couple of scripture verses, each one of these. So I want you to turn to them if you have them in your Bible or on your phone or wherever you look at it. And this particular passage of scripture, most of us might know as the Lord's Prayer. How many of you have ever heard the Lord's Prayer? Yep. You probably said the Lord's Prayer and at funerals and you know celebrations. And just as I was a new Christian, I used to learn this prayer. And then I learned the meaning of it. But I just want to uh, not read the whole thing, but I want to go to verse 12. It says, Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead, uh, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men what they sin... Uh, verse 14. For if you forgive men what they, uh, they sin against you, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. Verse 15. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father in Heaven will not forgive your sins. Now let's go to Ephesians. The book of Ephesians. And we're going to go to chapter 4 in the book of Ephesians. You know that's one of my favorite passages, right? 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. And at the end of chapter 4, it has this wonderful verse that it just blew my mind as I was studying this out for you this week. And I just couldn't stop reading it over and over and over. It says this, verse 32, Be kind and compassionate to one another. That's a good, that's a good rule, right? If we want to be obedient, be kind to one another, be compassionate to one another. And it says, forgive each other just as Christ has forgiven you. I thought, wow. So if somebody, if I, what, what affects my prayers is unforgiveness. When I have unforgiveness towards a person or, um, you know, sometimes it could be a family member, a mother, a father that has wronged us or we feel wrong, uh, maybe an employee or a co-worker that has uh, used you or talked bad about you, or maybe you just got an argument with somebody and there's this hatred that builds up between you. When you have that in your spirit, in your heart, it's very difficult to go to Father God. Because His Word says this, if we should forgive one another. And then, in Matthew says, if you don't forgive that person, then Heavenly Father can't forgive you. Yep. How's many ever, have you ever heard that before? Yes. It says, if you don't forgive somebody, our Heavenly Father can't forgive you. Why is that so significant? Because God has extended grace to you in your weakness, in the penalty of our sin. We have, uh, we deserve punishment, but God gave, paid that punishment for us through Jesus. So when we extend grace to somebody in that sin, and we, I mean, uh, sometimes I, I remember, uh, I can't tell stories to it, but I remember some people really wronged me, and I was really mad. And I thought that I was right because I'm a believer. I mean, I'm a child of God. You can't wrong me like this. This is, this is not right. So I held that hatred or that anger towards them, which then led into hatred. So that's how it builds. You get angry, you get upset, and then all of a sudden you're extended. And I was in prayer one morning, and God said this to me. Does God talk to you? I mean, he talks to me. He says, um, hey. What about this person? And you can't talk about anything else until you deal with that situation with God, right? I mean, you can't talk about, God, I have these needs, pray for my family. I can't do none of that. Because God said, what about this? So then I have to ponder the thought, how important is that relationship? Because I can affect the salvation of that person because of my hatred or unforgiveness towards that person. And what are we supposed to do? But Pastor, you don't know what they did. I know, I don't. I was telling you what happened to me. And God knows what happened to you, right? 
So I can't pray to God and ask him for anything because right now I'm dealing with this hatred or this unforgiveness toward that person. And pretty soon it's just, it's, it's all that's on my heart. It's all that's in my mind. I can't think about anything else. Anytime I open up the word, I can think of this person. Anytime I go to pray, I think of this person. And God's saying like, hey, then I go back to this verse right here. If you can't forgive them, then I won't forgive you. I mean, Jesus said it. In my Bible, it's read. In the Bible, it's read. So I know Jesus said it. And I'm thinking, how am I? This is impossible. Well, yeah, it's impossible in the, in the natural. But you know that Holy Spirit I talked about earlier? He's the one who's going to give you the thoughts and the ideas and what to do and how to deal with it. First thing you probably have to do is change your mind about that situation. God, please forgive me for being angry or have this unforgiveness held in my heart for so long towards this person. What does that do? That's, that takes a position of humility. God, you're bigger than me, and you can handle the situation. I can't handle it. You can do it, God. Please forgive me. I want to be able to communicate with you, and I know this is hindering me. So please, Lord, please forgive me and help me to reconcile that person to a place where they can get to know you. Now that's a really hard part. If somebody's wronged you, and you, you're right, and they're wrong 100%, no matter if you take it to the court of law, you would win. But in God's economy, the law is not as important as grace. And love. Amen. Two commandments that we're supposed to keep. Love God, and love our neighbor, which is probably the person that we have anger towards. It's like, it seems like that's the first person that comes up when you go to pray about that. Lord, help my church. Help us get the worship team. Help us get more finances so we can do what we can do. Help us to reach more people in the Madison, city of Madison. And the Lord says, uh, <clears throat> Hey, Bob, remember that person that you were angry at? How about we start there? So our prayers are hindered because of our relationship. Let's go to this other one. So we know that our relationship, that unforgiveness can hold us back from praying and God hearing, hearing from God. The other thing I think is important for husbands and wives and you that, that may be getting married in the future or, or whatever, 1 Peter chapter 3. Let's go there. I would suggest if you're married or you're going to get married, go ahead and read chapter 3, the whole thing, um, and understand that God has a way for husbands and wives to live together in harmony and love and grace so he, that, that, that our marriage would represent Christ in the world. Amen? So, you know, and we say, I think we always emphasize the bad things in marriage, but there's good things happening in the world, right? They say 50% they say of the marriages are ending in divorce today, but I think, you know, what about the other 50% that are doing really well? <laughs> Right? We never talk about that. We never talk about how young people are now instead of just having a contract marriage or having a covenant marriage and understanding that they have to love each other until death do us part and it has a meaning. There's a commitment like Christ committed himself to the church and died for it. That you commit yourself to your wife and your wife, the wife's or the lady commits herself to her husband. There's, a, there's amazing things that happen there. So the word of God has all that in it. I'm, I get excited about it because um, in marriage counseling I say, well, let's read the word. I like what you shared the other night. It was like, you know, I choose. I think Annie or Rachel started this too. I choose to love you, right? I, and you choose to love me. And I know we never put it in that words, but like we're committed, Tina and I were committed to each other since we're uh, 16 or 17. Anyway, we got married when we were 18, so it's a long time. So we had a lot of time to make, mess things up, right? <laughs> we did. Well, statistically, we shouldn't be married. We're making a four hundred dollars a month, living in a little shack next to a river. It was just crazy stuff we went through. But you know what? We were committed to each other. We, and then when we became Christians, we found out why. Mm -hmm. We started reading. First thing I did when I got became a believer, I read every scripture that talked about husbands and wives in the Bible. I want to know how to love my wife. I want to know how marriage, how God saw marriage. And it wasn't perfect, but you know, I don't think I'm still working on stuff. But I think the Word of God is really good. So one thing that in marriage is important is that you're, it says verse 7 here, and this is kind of responsibility both the husband and wife, but it says husband, in the same way, and you have to read the stuff before, we won't get into it today as much, but in the same way, consi um, cons um, 
Be considerate as you live with your wives and treat <coughs> them with respect as weaker partners. Not these guys get messed up when they read this, you know, they think, oh, my wife is weaker than me. No, that's not what the word does. It says, treat her as a weaker partner. That means she is weak. It's just treat her that way. Love her, honor her, respect her, lift her up, be there for her. That's what the word of God says. A lot of guys get messed up on this stuff. That's why I gotta explain it to them. And as heirs with you and of the gracious gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. So, if Tina and I are arguing with each other for whatever silly reason a husband and wife argue, right? And sometimes we wind up laughing about it, like, what are you arguing about again? We forget the beginning. And that's happened to us in the beginning. God did this. I remember Tina and I, when we first were married, we were living in a trailer, little shack in North Carolina. Um, we were brand new Christians, reading the Word of God, and we got an argument one day. We were in the bedroom, that's all I remember. And to, what, to this day, we don't remember what we were arguing about, but it was one of those heated, in-your-face arguments. I was mad. Tina was mad, I was like, you know, I'm a new Christian now, and I read this. So I'm like, hey, I don't want my parents in there. I'm like, I'm like, I don't want God to not bless us. So I'm like, hey, honey. And I did physically pick her up and set her on the bed, so I know that's not good today, but I just said, Sat her on the bed, I sat next to her, and I said, let's pray. Do you know, within seconds, we were just laughing, like there was like uncontrollable laughter. We just like, what are we laughing about? And what are we arguing about? We, we don't know. It was, like, it was like, we're putting God in the center of this marriage. And it's been like that ever since. I don't pick her up anymore. But, um, <laughs> but it was just one of those moments like, we're gonna, God's going to win and not the enemy. And we're going to have a happy marriage. We're going to do what we can do to live, live for God. Because I don't want our prayers to be hidden. Because we pray for people. And we pray for you guys. We pray for this church. And we pray for the city. And I don't want God not to hinder. So relationships can hinder your prayer life. So we have to examine that. Next thing is sin. How many know that sin can affect your prayer life? Let me share a couple of scripture. There's many, many scripture verses, but let me just share a couple with you. One, Psalm 66, 18 says this, I regard iniquity in my heart, and the Lord will not hear me. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is iniquity? Is sin. If I have iniquity, hatred towards God, or hatred towards you, if I have anything that's against God in my heart, then God won't hear me. That's pretty significant, right? I'm trying to pray, and I have this in my heart. Isaiah 59, 2 says this, but your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his and his he has hidden his face from your sin, so that he will not hear you. So God actually turns his face away from in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, he turned his face from you when you had sin in your life. Mm -hmm. In the New Testament, he can't hear you either. Thank God for Jesus mm -hmm. to make it all right. Amen. But think about that. John 9, 31 says, Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears them. So what, so it says, it says in John, this is uh, John 9, so he says God does not hear sinners. So how do they come to God? I put that out there because like it almost sounds like doesn't sound like something like the Bible's contradicting itself. You know? God loves everybody, he hears everybody, he wants everybody to come to him, and then it says that you're a sin. The only I believe this the sin when a sinner repents and comes to God, God hears that prayer. Amen. 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 I mean people pray all the time. I mean, you talk to people, they say, Yeah, I pray. You go on the street, take an interview thing, take a clipboard and a microphone on on Facebook, street, <laughs> ask people they pray. Everybody prays. They prayed a lot of different things, but who and our God, who's alive and loves you, will answer your prayer. Amen. Because He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be in good health. He wants you to have good things. I'll talk about that in the end a little bit. He wants you to to have joy. He wants you to have peace in your life. Right? Because and sin will take that away from you. So sin. <laughs> it's interesting. One scripture says, everybody knows what sin is. You can go and look in the Bible and say, like, hey, you know, all these different things are sin, but you know what? Everybody knows what sin is. How does that happen? An atheist knows what sin is. I was talking to, uh, I'm going to tell a story because I'm going to get this online. So I'm going to go, 
I'll tell you the story afterward. Anyway, one of our members of the uh, Freedom from Religion Foundation, I got to talk to them and he shared some things and just pray for those guys. Like you can't be, listen, no matter how much you don't believe there's a God, it doesn't matter. The Holy Spirit is still there wooing those people into relationship with God. No matter how much you hate God, no matter, no matter what, God is drawing people and us to Him to His side all the time. Mm -hmm. You have to actually reject the Holy Spirit's moving in your heart to not listen to God. Mm -hmm. I will not listen to you. I'm going to do my own thing. Nobody here has ever done that, right? You know, you're, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to listen to God. I mean, you, He's there all the time. When you're studying, He's there. When you're doing your, your practice, and He's there. He wants you to prosper, amen? So sin, God is revealing through His Spirit sin in your life. That's believers and unbelievers. Amen? Why? Because He wants a pure bride, holy. A bride is acceptable to, to, the, to Him, amen? And the world will see, wow, look at how magnificent those people are. How come those Christians love each other? How can you have a church with all these different cultures represented in one little building just, in this, just this morning? Why? Because we love each other. Amen. And I will not let the enemy come between us. That's one of my prayers. If we're supposed to be in the real church, then everybody should be accepted, and we should love each other, draw to draw people to a relationship with God. Sin separates that, and sin hurts our prayers. So I want to see our city change for the kingdom of God. I can't have sin in my life. I can't have sin hidden in my heart. I can't have it in my mind. I have to reject that and accept the power of God in my life. So I can see this city change. For his kingdom. Can you say amen? Amen. Come on, look at the, look around you. If we just had another family from each one of the cultures that represented, we'd have like a really cool multicultural trip, right? This is awesome. I love you guys. God, this is God doing something magnificent in the middle of Madison, Wisconsin. Yep. Right? We don't want, I don't, I love you guys. I want to see I told you, we're taking a week's vacation, but you know what we're doing? We're going to just go and see God for a week on the beach, though. What my baby is saying. Right? Yeah. That's where, that beach that I'm going to be on, let me tell you something. The beach that I'm going to be on, the same beach when I was a brand new Christian, I used to go pray on. I used to walk up, there's no, there was no condos there, there was no buildings there, it was just a beach. But anyway, um, now it's not, but um, I used to walk up that beach and pray and spend Saturday mornings with God. For about two or three hours, I'd read my Bible and I'd just walk and pray. And I'd watch the waves come in. I'd say, God, whatever you want to do in my life, you do it. God, whatever you want me to do, I will do. Amen. I'd pray that all the time. And I know God answers those prayers. I'm here not by mistake, and you're here not by mistake. God is calling us to, to pray for this city. This church was, God told me, it should be a church that will pray for the nations. Amen. We're not just pray for. We're going to pray for the nations and all the nations that have come to Madison, Wisconsin. We're going to see them come to full knowledge of Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. Another reason that God doesn't answer prayers is because we're not praying God's will. Mm -hmm. So, what is God's will? Somebody tell me what is God's will. I mean, if I had an, you got to, you're taking an exam. This is for your. This is your final exam. You get to graduate after this test. After you answer this question, we'll come up, we'll give you a diploma, we'll put the robe on you, you'll get your, your doctorate even. How's that? That's how powerful this question is. Right? What is the will of God? To love him. What is the will of God? Think about that for a second. Don't rush, don't rush to this. You scholars, listen. What is the will of God? This is important because everything else is not as important as knowing the very will of God. <laughs> This is the will of God in Christ Jesus. That every person is saved. That nobody perishes. God's will is that nobody perishes. So when we pray the will of God, we're praying that everybody would come to know the full knowledge of Jesus. Well, what about the things I need? God knows what you need before you ask for one and those two. But pray His will. Pray this sometime this week. Just like Jesus in the garden before he went to the cross, he prayed this prayer. God, not my will be done, but your will be done. He's talking to his Father in heaven. And that's what's so beautiful about prayer. Is that we these things hinder God, but when we go to God in prayer, we now have access to God through the Spirit. 
Jesus died on the cross. Do you remember that? When he died on the cross, the curtain in the temple was ripped from top to bottom. How many know that? You don't talk about the temple in Jerusalem. At that time, when the Romans were in charge of Jerusalem, the curtain was ripped from top to bottom. Now, because of that happened, that symbolizes that we now have full access to God our Father through Jesus Christ. So when I pray His will, I go to the Father. I, this is how I pray. Father, I'm praying for Madison, Wisconsin. I ask God that every nation that's represented in Madison, Wisconsin would be able to come to know you as Lord and Savior. From all over the world, every country, India, China, Mexico, you name it, everybody. Uh, India, South Africa, Africa, Asia, it, Australia, whoever comes to Madison, even with Madisonians, you know, I mean, everybody. I pray that, and I just cry to God for them. And then I say, Father, at the end of my prayer, I pray in the name of Jesus, because he gave us that authority. Amen. Why doesn't God answer prayer? Because we're not praying His will. Start praying for other people instead of yourself and see that God will answer your prayer. Let me say that again. That's pretty good. Start praying the will of God. Pray for other people and other things and God will answer your prayer. It's amazing. Just test God in this. You know, you test in tithing and offering, you test God in that. You know, test God in your prayer time. God, I need this. I want this. Whatever it is. I mean, God knows what you need. I mean, He's not, He knows He's all knowing. If we believe God is all knowing, He's all knowing. He knows everything. So we're going to pray the will of God. The reason we don't answer God in that's prayer is because we don't pray in His will. And there's a couple, 2 Peter 3, you can go there, 1 John 4, 5. Just read those. Number four. The reason God sometimes doesn't answer our prayers in James 4.3, write that down, James 4.3, is because you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasure. <laughs> so here's the, here's the reason God doesn't answer, because you're asking for something for yourself, for your own pleasure. And God's, I don't know, he just says, you're asking amiss. Let's, Oh, you want to turn every you can see. So I'm asking for my own selfishness, right? Mm -hmm. Why is that so bad? Like I need stuff. God knows what you need before you ask. I'm asking for selfish motives. God, I need, I need, I need, I need. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's more like I want, I want, I want. Mm -hmm. And God says, I gave you that job. So you can make all that money, so you can use it for your mission field to reach people for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh no, we got money because now I want this, and I want that, and I want this, and all these things, and so we're spending it all on ourselves, and we're not really spending it on the kingdom of God. You get real quiet in here. <laughs> but that's not the American dream. The American dream is you get a car, a house, you have uh, 2.5 kids, you have a dog and a cat, and then you get a boat, and you get stuff for yourself. Because that's the American dream. But I tell you, and I love that book, Radical. If you ever read Radical by David Platt, you need to read that book, Radical. Because the wealth that you have is not your own. The wealth that you have is given to you by God. Come on, say amen. You know I'm right. Come on, this is hard stuff, but this is good stuff yeah. because sometimes we don't answer, God doesn't answer our prayers because we're asking for the wrong motives. Yeah. Yeah. I worked hard. Yeah, God gave you a brain to be a doctorate in science or whatever your doctor is. Great, praise God for that. Then you have an opportunity as a Christian to share Christ with the world around you. Now I know, um, what's that young lady from Korea? She was, um, she, had, she was going for her defense and her, for her doctorate. And she was not part of our congregation for a long time. Now she got a job, now she moved. But her defense, she was in science something, but they wanted her to keep the uh, creation out of her doctorate, her thesis. And she said, no, I'm not changing it. This is what I believe. This is what she put in there. And her advisors and the students that were helping her, everybody, no, you can't do it. You're not going to pass. You're, they're going to make you wait. And she says, no, I believe that I'm a born again child of God. And she would not bow to Baal. She would not bow down to the world system. And you know what happened? She got her defense and they approved it. First time going through it. Because she wouldn't compromise what she believed. Amazing. God prospered her and gave her a job and all that kind of I don't know where she's at today. I have to email her and find out. But it was just amazing 
that she would not compromise. So you're at that level and you're, you have your doctorate, you're in the sciences or whatever you're at at the university. Do it. Do it for the kingdom of God. God placed you there. And why did I say all that? Because I don't want you to ask for something that, you, that is a mess that for yourself. God put you in all in those positions for a reason. And God will answer your prayers if you answer, you do it for the right motive. Yes, God, I want my doctorate. Why do you want your doctorate? God, because I want it because I want to be a, a representative of you in, the, in my field. Amen. I want to show that the world that Jesus is powerful and everything. Amen. So you have the right motives. Not selfish motives. Well, because I want to get my, I want to get a job. I want to work at a university. I want to get paid this much so I can have a big house. And all that. <laughs> but that's just the wrong motive. You might get all those things. Don't get me wrong. But the gospel that we preach has to be for the person that's at that end of the spectrum, but also for the the poor kid in Africa or in India or Asia, right? The gospel we preach has to be the same. It's it's not different. The gospel I preach here has to work in, in China and, and all over the world. It's not a gospel of prosperity that we teach in America a lot. It's not that. It's a true gospel. Jesus will forgive your sins. That's the gospel. Jesus raised from the dead and is coming back. That's, the God, that's what we have to preach. That's why you have your position. That's why you have your wealth. Because God wants to use it for his glory. Amen? So, I mean, we're only here temporary anyway. Maybe yeah. 60, 70, 80 years on earth, and then yeah. it's over. So, you know, let's do what we can, because eternity is like a lot longer than 80 years, right? I mean, we're going to spend that for God. So we we lived all this time. I mean, I'm thank God I got, uh, became a Christian early in my life. Amen. I do. I thank God at 19 years old, I, I became a believer. And at 25, I was called into ministry, and so we've been doing this ever since. I want God to be glorified in all your life. So you do what you do, your skills that you have, you use them to the best of your ability, but no, God gave you those skills, amen? Don't pray amiss, don't pray for yourself. Who has no faith? Why does God answer prayer? Because you don't have faith, number five. If you don't have faith, okay, James 1. Let's turn to James 1. James chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. <clears throat> Look at me when you're there. Praise God. I feel the presence of God here. <laughs> it's like coming in this morning, right? You know, the piano's missing, the sound system's not working right. This is going, you know, we, can, we got a little upset at first, but you know what? God, God's bigger than the piano. Right? God's bigger than your broken car or your broken, right? God's bigger than all, everything. So, I like what Andy shared last week. God's bigger than the box you put him in. That got me a couple times this week, I think about that. Had a situation, like, God's bigger than this situation, right? We said, God's bigger than this. God, help me take care of it. Help me have a good attitude doing it, too. Amen? So, it says this, and uh, let me read it from the Bible itself. <clears throat> verse, uh, James 1, verse 6. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. So it says, you have to have faith when you pray. What is faith when you pray? When you have faith, that means you believe what you're praying. Right? So sometimes we pray for people that are sick. I love praying for people that are sick. Does everybody get healed when I pray for them? No, not everybody gets healed, but some do. I don't like that time. <laughs> Amen. But you know, I just I tell I say this a lot, but I don't take any blame for if it happens or doesn't happen. I just believe when I pray that it's gonna happen. <laughs> right? That's all I do. I just believe. I don't, I don't go, oh man, God didn't heal that person today, or God didn't answer that. No, I just pray and believe. Mm -hmm. Amen? When I pray for something, I believe God's going to answer my prayer. So when I prayed here almost 10, 11 years ago, and I said, God, I want a multicultural church that would represent you and represent heaven, look, look around you. It's a small group, but look around you. And I think I, with Dion and, and, and Rajiv and, and Angel when they're on the board, I like to, I guess the kid, you know, we, I don't want an all-whitey church. <laughs> right? 
which is 89, 90% of Madison. I want a church that represents the kingdom of God. So that means everybody, and it, what's really fun is because when we have our business meeting on the 15th of May, we're going to have lunch afterwards. So I'm going to encourage you to bring something from your culture so to share lunch with us. Amen? And that's always fun because we have some good food. Right? Otherwise, it'll just be meat and potatoes. It's a big white American thing, right? We want, we want some stuff. We want some Chinese. We want some, we want some stuff, right? We want some, uh, some Mexican stuff, right? Mom, I don't know about kimchi, but, you know, I can try it again. You know, but I want, you know, let's bring some, uh, some good food uh, for that day. So we're going to have a business meeting, and then we're going to have some awesome, we'll have a call. So when you pray, folks, and you know what's so beautiful about this? Is that if you've been walking with the Lord for many, many years, it's the same faith if you just started walking with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe God can do it. Amen? How many get mad at God when He doesn't answer your prayer? Come on. Mm -hmm. I get mad. Mm -hmm. I God, I want this. I need this. Right? We get mad. Or a situation happens and we get mad. And we blame God for it. The most beautiful revelation I see in people's lives is when they realize God didn't cause that pain or cause that circumstance. And they realize that God has the answer to that situation, but he didn't cause that situation. Amen? As difficult as I will believe it. That's what's so beautiful about mission community groups. We get together and we can talk and encourage each other in the faith so we can continue to walk this thing out. Because we need to be disciples into understanding this thing about prayer. I want to encourage you. Please come uh, next Saturday night and come to learn how to pray. Amen? Well, I'm afraid to pray in public. That's okay. God knows that. Mm -hmm. I'm shy. No, no. That's fine. But I think there's times when we sit in silence and we pray to God. I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I think there's times in corporate situations where we can pray out loud. Amen? I believe sometimes when I pray on the street for people, I don't pray. I don't go up to the person on the street and I go, um, can I pray for you? <laughs> and then you walk away. No, I, I say, listen, I think the Lord wants to pray for you. Is there something wrong with your health? And they tell me, and guess what I do? Father, in the name of Jesus, would you pray for this? What's your name? Tina. Tina, can I pray for you? In name. And I tell you, God, the presence of God instantly shows up in the middle of State Street or middle of uh, um, Hilldale Mall. Right? Because I just feel like the Holy Spirit, the one I told you about, leads me to pray for them. I love praying for people in public. Because not only am I praying for that person, I'm all, the people around me, they are, they're listening. Mm -hmm. And I get the snooty looks like, what is that? Like, I get that. I don't, it doesn't bother me. I, they're not, I'm not offended. They're mad at God. That's mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to talk to them. Uh, I want to tell us this. Let me uh, close with this. I have so many fun stories in, uh, of ministering uh, outside the church building. Because... <laughs> I, my thought is that everybody inside the church are at least believers, right? And the people outside the church are unbelievers. So I need to represent Jesus there too. Amen. And to love on people. So this afternoon, we're going to the zoo with the kids. And as we're walking, the kids are looking at the giraffes and elephants or whatever there. I haven't been there in a long time. But, you know, it'll be fun. But as I'm walking, what's the, the Holy Spirit's moving. And he's leading me, he's guiding me, and I'm, I'll pray for whoever the Holy Spirit tells me to. Because that's what we are, a representation of Jesus in the world. You remember that woods? <clears throat> Desolate, all the trees are empty, no fruit, just dry, dry orchard or, or trees. So in the wintertime, it, it looks dead. I mean, it just looks dead. And sometimes our prayer life is like that, which is dead. But I want you to know, in those dry times, that we go through with God, the tree never dies. In the winter time, the roots are growing in the tree. Mm -hmm. And the roots are taking nutrients from the ground. Amen? And there, those nutrients will be in that tree, and in the springtime, will start to produce fruit. It'll start to produce leaves. It'll start to grow. Amen? And I was... Uh, I was thinking about this. In those dry times, I was out yesterday picking up the branches that fell off my tree in my backyard, which was a lot this year, because it was really windy. So I have a lot of these little branches, and I don't want to run them over with the lawnmower when it's time to do that. So I'm picking up all these little branches. I had a big pile of them. 
And I was doing that. The Holy Spirit told me, in the winter time, in the time that is, seems like it's dry, God is pruning us. By his spirit. The wind of the Holy Spirit comes and breaks up all the little branches. And what he does in our lives, the wind of the Holy Spirit will come into our lives and reveal things in our life that are right with him. And we can, we can, he'll take those off of our lives if we let him. Amen? Follow me? So in the wintertime, all those trees that are bare, no leaves, nothing, all those little branches are break or even broken off by the wind of the spirit. And he's doing that in our lives. He's taking things out of our lives so we can grow. And then what happens is we produce this fruit uh, that is just amazing. And in the springtime or at the end of that season that you're going through, all of a sudden now God is answering your prayers. You're producing fruit so people can come and enjoy it. What is the fruit that he, he produces? I'm going to close with a different scripture. Let's turn to Galatians chapter 5. <clears throat> This is really important. I, I hope you get this in your spirit. God, even though you feel like he's not answering your prayer at this moment, and all these things, maybe you don't have sin in your life. Maybe you're not asking selfishly. Maybe you're, all your relationships are good, but you still feel dry. Your roots are growing. God is increasing your faith. And all of a sudden, in the springtime, when you realize God is not blessing you, all of a sudden, there's going to be a joy, and there's going to be fruit that comes. And people are going to be able to partake of that and know God is good. Amen? God, by His Holy Spirit, wants to lead you to a place that faith grows in you, and you produce a fruit that people will see. <clears throat> God wants to build in you. Galatians chapter 5. God said, My house will be a house of prayer for all nations. Right? As we pray for things, as we pray the will of God. The Spirit of God prays for us, and sometimes we don't know how to pray. Mm -hmm. We will pray through us. It's the Holy Spirit that, that encourages us to pray. It's the Holy Spirit. Listen, the Holy Spirit is in you right now. How many believers? Everybody's a believer here. I, I believe that everybody here is a believer, correct? Say yes, please. Yes. 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 I'm a believer. I love it. I'm sorry. I learned to preach down south where everybody responded to the sermon. So I, I will encourage you to do that when I preach. So just, just don't get mad at me. Just love me, okay? <laughs> just love me. Because, see, what you're going to take today is important. That if the Holy Spirit is in you, then this should be the fruit that comes out of you. And it happens in prayer as you get closer to God. And God prunes the things out of your life and changes your mind and changes your heart. All of a sudden, something happens. The deposit of your salvation, there should be joy to know that if I take my last... Listen, that's what salvation is about. If I take my breath, my last breath, I'm going to be present with God. I don't fear death, right? As a believer, I know that my last moment in my life, I'm going to be in His presence. Salvation will be, I'll be with God. Amen. I'm willing to give my life up for this cause. Because I don't do it by myself. I can't do it by myself. The Holy Spirit is in me. And if the Holy Spirit is in you, look at the scripture with me, if you will. Please, I, uh, Galatians chapter 5. And if you want to know about, about sin and all this stuff, read the verses before. You can do that at home today. But right now, look at verse 22. It says, but the fruit... Right after the winter, after your roots are being grown, and after the uh, energy or the minerals are back up into my, in my being, if you will, and it goes out to the branches, there's fruit to be had. This is the fruit that we have. Look what it says here. It says, the, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's that prayer. God, help me to love like you love. Help me to love you. Help me to love Jesus. Help me to love the Holy Spirit. Help me to love my pastor. <laughs> Help me to love my neighbor. Amen? Help me to love those people around me like you love them. This is what my prayer yesterday was. Lord, let me see people like you see them. Let my heart break when your heart breaks. Let me, let me see individuals like you see them. Because it's so easy to judge today, right? So it's, we're, we've got a critical spirit. We need to get rid of that. Jesus, let me love. Amen? The fruit of spirit. Look at this next one, joy. 
Put a smile on your face. Amen. If you have the Spirit of God in you, we should be happy people. All the time. Like the Spirit is giving us joy, and then we gotta step out of that joy and go, okay, I'm not gonna be joyful right now because I don't want the Spirit in me. I want the Spirit in me. I want the joy. I want to walk in the Spirit. I want Him in me. So I said, love, joy. How about peace is next? How many worry, like worry, are you worried worse? About your grades, about your finances, food. Do I look good today? I, you know, what? no, peace, my children. Peace, peace. God has His own for patience, kindness, goodness. Faithful. You see, the world thinks they got this thing all master. I'm going to have a, all these groups around mass and we're going to help people. No, God was God's idea first. We're supposed <laughs> to help people. We're supposed to help what true religion is, helping the widows and the orphans. Amen? This is part of what we're, you know, take care of one another, love one another, be there for one another. Take all that you have, all your resources, and use it for His kingdom. What would that look like? Look, God, I got, you know, I got uh, kids, I got... Bill, God knows all that. I think it's just a willingness to say, God, all that I have is yours. Because now I'm praying in the will of God, not praying for myself. Does that change anything in your heart? Gentleness. I'm working on that one, too. And self-control. And look what it says. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature, its passions and desire. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, or envying of each other. See, the Bible envy. Why doesn't God answer prayer? Because we don't believe He, he can. Why does that God answer prayer? Because we're not asking in His will. Why does God answer prayer? Because we have sin in all. Why does God answer prayer? Because we're selfish. And why does God answer prayer? Because we don't believe He can. But when we walk in the Spirit, He, he, he confirms to our spirit that we're children of God. And then He'll answer, He'll ask anything in His name. And He'll do it for us. How powerful is that? Ask anything in His name and he'll do it for us. So let's do this. Let's do this. Let me, I don't want to respond here. So let me do, let's do this. We're not going to, um, we're going to take a moment right where you're at. And I want you, you don't have to talk out loud, talk to God, right? And I want you to, if anything I read, read here next is in your life or you're struggling with, would you ask God to forgive you and take that away? Can we do that? Let's do that together, okay, as a group. Let's say, okay, Pastor Bob, that's a good sermon. I have like, okay, I know sometimes God doesn't answer my prayer, and maybe these are the reasons why. If when as I read them, if God reveals by his spirit, that's how it happens, okay? In your in you is the positive of the Holy Spirit, right? We said that earlier. So the Holy Spirit in you is going to reveal to you something I'm going to read next that maybe something in your life is not right. So let's be honest with God and just ask him to forgive us. Or help us to work on that area in our life. And then he'll forgive us. Amen. So we, when we pray next, we can pray in faith, believe in whatever we ask in his name, because we're asking as well that God will do it for us. Amen. So let's do this. So the first one is relationship. Who in your life do you have unforgiveness or hatred or, 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 or strife with? Maybe right now you can just ask God to forgive you for that. And Lord, help me change that hatred and that, that unforgiveness into your life. You see the hearts right now, Lord. You see everybody, Lord, that you brought to the, I wish you brought to the, uh, a name or a person or situation, Lord. Just for, you, for your healing over that right now. For your healing, Lord. So like in Matthew, we can actually forgive, Lord. So you can forgive us. So Father, all the hurts that happen through bad relationships, God, I pray for your healing right now in Jesus' name. Everybody just close your eyes, That's you. If you have a relationship that's hurt you or you've been hurt by and you're having a struggle with forgiveness or unforgiveness, would you please raise your hand and right back home? Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Father, for forgiving those and healing those hurts, Father. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. How about
of sin. The Bible says, you know what sin is. You don't have to be, you don't have to be explained to us. If there's sin in your life, and there's something that you've been struggling with, you just raise your hand and put it right back down. There's no prayer for you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, you see the hands that are raised. You know that their hearts are struggling with right now. Everybody be praying, please. Father, I just pray that you just touch these, these individuals, Father God. Father, your word tells us if we confess our faults to one another, we, we ask for forgiveness, God, and you would forgive us. So, Father, I, I break the power of sin on their lives right now in the name of Jesus. Father, set them free, that the same freedom that Jesus gave us for forgiveness of our sins through the cross, God, I pray that freedom would be broken, those sins would be broken right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everybody can pray when I pray. It's good. <clears throat> and Father, I want to pray the will of God from now on. I want to pray your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, I'm praying personally for myself right now. Not my will be done in my life. Father, we know that your perfect will is that none should perish, that all shall repent and come to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me, Holy Spirit, to, to speak and tell me how much you love them. Thank you, Father. My Father, I pray for selfish motivation, Lord. God, I want to pray your will and nothing else in Jesus' name. This is the hard one. This is the tough one at the end here. Father, help me to believe when I pray that you hear me. And Father, I come against the enemy, Satan, the demonic forces that will cause doubt and fear to come on our hearts and minds that not let us believe that when I pray to you, Father God, that you hear me. Father, I thank you for that right now. I thank you for everybody in this room, Lord, that our lives will be changed today because we know, without a doubt, God, you hear us and we worship you and we praise you and we thank you for that. Hallelujah. For your name is great and amazing and awesome. Father, we love you. Tell him right now you love him. Tell Father God you love him and you thank him for what he's doing in your life. Thank you, Father, for touching each person. Would you stand right now as we pray a prayer to dismiss? But I want to uh, open up the altars up here. If you want, if you're struggling in your prayer life, if any things that we just said, if you want some more prayer, I think Andy, Andy, come up here, and uh, myself, Tina, why don't you come here? Let's him just put some music on or something, and let you pray for the ladies. Would you come and pray with Tina, and uh, guys, come and pray with us or Andy, and let's just. Yeah, if there's a battle in your life that you need to get victory over, we're going to take care of it today. Amen? Oh, let me, okay, let me read this one more time. <laughs> okay, let me just, let me, everybody put a smile on your face. It's, I'm, I'm really early today, so i got like 20 more minutes. But, <laughs> but we'll end right now. And we want you to listen. I want in my life, I want to be, I want to have God's love in my life. Amen. I want God's spirit to be in me. I want to represent God's love, his joy, his peace, his patience. Amen. This is what God wants for you every day. Read Galatians chapter 5. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's just do that. Can you put some music on, uh, William? And then we're just going to pray for dismissal. Uh, matter of fact, Richard, why don't you, would you pray for us a prayer of dismissal? Heavenly Father, I just, I just thank you for the truth that you've shown us today, Lord. I pray that your word would become alive in our hearts, Lord. Uh, throughout this week, Lord, I pray that you would remind me of these five things, Lord. I pray that, um, Lord, we would be serious about your word. Uh, Lord, I pray that we would, we would give, give, give life to your word, Lord, that we would, we would practice what, what was taught today, Lord. Lord, let us have the right motives. Lord, uh, let, let us seek you with a whole heart, Father. Yes. And Lord, I pray, Father, um, that, that you would even bring um, people in our lives that would encourage us to live this way. 
Uh, and Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your acceptance. We yes. thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we just receive you right now. We thank you for your promises. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be dismissed. Hallelujah. God bless you. Wow.